shoot, that's right. Eventually I have to make my Christmas. Oh, hello folks. Welcome back for I'm the one, the only, I am a hobo Tom. In a while. You know what? For all the lack of content I've been providing you guys, this is a stacked show today. Three major topics to talk about. But before I go for all that, because this is, so I am the one, the only, hobo Tom. There we go. So, three major things to hit on today. Um, and before I get to those three things, thank you to give out. I have made... Well, the Reverend Wells and Meow Meow Fuzz, they are all officially made. They are now officially part of the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League, which you can catch on... Let's see, how many Tuesdays from now? Two Tuesdays from now. So in two weeks from today for El Dio de Macho, the Havoc of Halloween, Daytona Beach Bum Fight League special. You'll see them there. Also, Satanic Monkey. I guess you know you, you're you a kung fu fighting? So with that, thank you out of the way again. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you want your own personal thank you shout out, find me over on Discord, leave me a comment, subscribe. Uh, Seer, part one now. Let's talk about Impact Bound for Glory. Yes, Impact Bound for Glory is this weekend, the weekend of Biketoberfest. So that's going to be interesting. Also, part of Oktoberfest. And it's a pretty stacked card. Serial. So start off. I have no idea because Impact always does something odd. So we have the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match. Just to make things interesting, I think Bully Ray is going to win that. I. Like, no one else on the other... Unless there's... I was so tempted to put mystery person because there's always some mystery person that shows up. Unless... C... M... Punk? Shows up? Wow, that would be amazing. <laughs> if C M Punk shows up, it would be C M Punk. Highly doubt that though. But you heard it here first, folks. CM Punk. The Call Your Shot Colin for Impact Wrestling. I can't even keep a straight face when I say that. So, if it's not CM Punk, it's going to be Bully Right. There, I said it. Then you have the um, Monster Mash match. You have PCO versus Rhino versus Steve Macklin versus Moose from Moose Nation. 
I think it's going to be interesting. I think it sets up for Steve Mackman winning. And therefore, some interesting booking decisions can happen for Impact come to the future. We have then the women's tag team. You know, this is the one thing I do appreciate about Impact Wrestling. The women are featured probably proportionally in more segments and have longer matches than they do definitely than AEW. I mean, besides the women of wrestling, that's that's when or or uh, Joshi wrestling, because that's it's all women only. But proportionally, Impact uses their women more. I mean, even from the past show I saw, Alicia Alicia Edwards got involved in the match. The great women's match. I mean, women's tag. There's so much going on. WWE does use their women really good. They do have sometimes they fall back on the four minute match every so often, but not so much, and definitely not the five minute women fiasco for the whole show that AEW has. That being with my rants being said, uh, we have MK Ultra. Misha Slamovich and Killer Kelly taking on Diana Parazzo and Tasha Steeles. Yeah, MK Ultras, they're keeping those belts. We have the Rascals. We have some faction warfare. Yes. For the tag team titles. We have the Rascals of Tr Trey Wentz. Or Wentz, uh, Wentz and Trey. Yeah. I think. Yeah, because it's Trey Miguel and, and Wentz. Um, versus, wait a second. Can I queue it up quick enough? So here we have Ace Austin and Chris Bay. And of course, their faction is the one, the only... Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, here it comes. That's right. Bullet Club. For life. Is there just two? I always have to do that for any Bullet Club faction. Uh, um, I have Bullet Club winning. The Rascals are pretty good, but I think Bullet Club might be a little bit more devious. And that would be good. Impact needs needs some variety. Again, that would set up something great. The Rascals could, could do some stuff. That would be fun. Um, on four... Unfortunately, the only match you can really take a nap through will probably be Trinity versus Mickey James. No disrespect to Mickey James nor Trinity, but I don't know. It just this is one of those matches where it feels like you already know what the outcome is going to be. So with that, Mickey, J and more so with Mickey James' husband, Nick Aldis, going to the WWE, I have a feeling Impact's going to use Mickey James less, and, and, and she might be on her way out somewhere. And hopefully not with just a garbage bag full of her stuff. But yeah, um... Trinity's going to win. I think this is one of those matches where it's a near foregone conclusion. Not so much a stone cold lock, but pretty close to it. But you know the outcome. And the next match, I'll tell you what, I was so tempted to make this match of the night. I 
think the main event's going to be that. And we have Chris Sabin versus Kenta for the X Division title. This is... might change my mind. Because I think... You know what? I want to change my mind. Kenta is going to win the X Division champion. And this way... Oh. What's his face? The guy with the gold X around his neck. Kushida. That's the name I was looking for. Can face Kenta. Actually, that would be pretty cool. And any impact, because it's, say, November, December, January. I mean, Kenta versus Kushida. For the, for the X Division belt at Wrestle Kingdom, would definitely bump up Impact's brand recognition, I think. So, yeah. So, Kenta's going to win. That would be good. Cause then, so, you have the Bullet Club, you have Motor City Machine. That's, yeah. That makes sense. And then my stone cold lock of the night. We have Will Ospreay versus Speedball Mike Bailey. Impact, I think, is over their impact centric universe. Will Ospreay is going to win. And that's just going to make Will Ospreay a bigger star. And it gives Impact some more goodwill. Again, with New Japan, AEW, those brands. And then in my match of the night. The champion, the champion from Detroit, Michigan, from Detroit, one half of the Motor half. City Machine Guns. No, uh, yes, like right there. Actually, wait, let's be on this hand. Whatever. Yeah, there we go. Alex Shelley versus from somewhere in Canada. The walking weapon, Josh Alexander. And you know what? I think Josh Alexander is going to get that title back. Alex Shelley had a good run. They've been teasing dissension. And this way, Bully Ray could take it off. Josh. <laughs> Bully Ray or CM Punk. To take it off Josh Alexander that night. And that sets up. So Bully Ray cashes in on Josh Alexander eventually. Again, this is my long-term booking thoughts. Um, Bully Ray cashes in the Call Your Shot Gauntlet trophy on Josh Alexander. Cheats takes it off him. He feuds with Steve Macklin because those two have been at odds. Steve Macklin probably in line for a future Impact Championship. You heard that here first, folks. One of the Forgotten Sons actually makes it. Good job, Steve Macklin. Okay, so that's the main part. The second part, we have a local star that made it big finally here in Florida. Let's see here. I do have a couple. Of, do I have a couple of cards of her? Okay, that's... I actually do. Amber Nova. Amber Nova. Let's see, where is she on this card? There she is. There she is. Oh, let's see. Uh-oh. I hit the wrong, I hit the computer. There she is. 
right there. And Bernova from. Oh, this was actually WrestleFest. Kind of free plug. Team Dojo, Team Vision Dojo, part of Believe in Wrestling. There's the one. Which one's this? Yeah, again, I Believe in Wrestling. There she is. And Bernova. Incredibly beautiful looking woman with, with an eight pack of abs and drives around in muscle cars. Let's take a picture and show that to my friends. I'm like, yeah, this is who she is. She made big, folks. Check out this news highlight on a national news program Fox 35 or Fox 5, whatever it is. Check out this video, though. But I stole from TV. Amber Nova. Right now. We're hearing from Amber Nova on how she's prepared. Amber Nova. Plus a shopping cart. Amber Nova is now a professional wrestler after years of working as an EMT. Finally, Amber Nova. Look at those abs. <laughs> no. Beyond wrestling. She's living out her childhood dream. It wasn't just handed to me and it wasn't just luck. You have to make sacrifices if you want to live your dreams. It took a career pivot a decade ago. She used to be an EMT charged with quick response times and saving lives. Amber Nova. In the ring. I think she was on AEW once. She says it always oh, wow. served as motivation. My dad got me the classic car. He got me into wrestling, and they were very supportive. I'm going to be honest. How many people probably told me no? When I was an EMT, my fireman buddies, my, my paramedic partners, a lot of them laughed at me, said you'll be back in six months. Some of them were like, go for it, girl. We got your back. Regardless Amber Nova. Yep, that's her car. Namesake, 73 Chevy Nova SS. That's she even right. works on it herself. I'm the daughter of a mechanic. Dad taught me how to turn a wrench myself, so that's something I'm proud of. Nova says it's one way to stand out in the With male sport, and it makes her instantly recognizable. Throughout her wrestling career, she's most proud of being a role model for young girls oh, in the audience. We're, we're main eventing. We're respected as much as the guys. We're proving to little girls around the world that you can do anything. I know she was here in the, in the Atona Beach for a while. Benny Martinez, Fox 35 News. That's it. The heck? The ring of... And then finally, yes, because it is Oktoberfest, it's everything sausage. Um, Chicago, I have not made one of these in a while. So check out this special Hobo Kitchen with me, Hobo Tom, showing you how to make a Chicago style pizza. Hello folks, welcome back. I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. There's a hobo cat, the fat fluff in their food. It's that time of year again. Well, I don't know, I have a pizza pan ready. Tray, yep, it's time to make something different. I haven't made a video like this in a while, cooking with the hobo. So I'm going to make a Chicago style pizza today. The first thing I always have to do, you see there, Yeast have to activate because I like to make my yeast. So first thing, 
making a Chicago style pizza so that you have to make the pizza dough. So I've got to let this activate. So we'll be back in 15 minutes. Okay, so now I skipped a step, but here's the proof dough. That's going to go into this pan because I figured out the ultimate way. Put this here. Got my little pizza pan. Did Mark get lost or is he confused? Well, yeah, that's why I think they should they should keep they should have like a whole event. So that way they have like people directing traffic. Seems... They had people directing people into park, but they had three lanes with people, and it just, they had three lanes trying to get it down to one lane. Butter in first where's the kind of olive oil. Should tell her she's a southerner. She should know how to make this stuff. Or is that a horribly racist thing to say? Hey, Christine, look towards your left. This into the pan. Yay. I'll let this double proof. Okay, folks, so we're back. Again, this is puffed up really nicely. And I've always preferred to have too much rise than not enough because you can always press down. And when I press down, if they use the fist, going to get the water running. I got to get this going because I have a show to prep for. Just kind of press down. And in, make that crust look nearly perfect. I mean, it's, you know, have a nice little skin towards it, which is good. This is what you want when from, or at least what I've seen, what you want from your Chicago style pizza. Just kind of pat that down a little bit more. 
that's actually going to begin the end of the proofing. And my hands are just a little bit oily, mainly because I use a little olive oil in my recipe. Again, pretty simple recipes, pizza dough, uh, one little pack of sugar, pack of yeast. So there we go, look at that perfect pan item. Perfect Chicago depth. And now, folks, it's time to cheese it up. Now, depending who you cheese meat and sauce it up. Now, depending who you ask is going to depend a little bit on what your toppings are. But I'm going to use a couple different toppings. I am going through this really quick. So, very simply, you have some just sliced mozzarella cheese, sliced provolone. I always prefer fresh mozzarella balls, some sausage, and tomatoes. Now, depending on who you are and where you come from, it's going to depend a little bit on the order. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my sliced cheeses down first. And if I have leftover, that's fine. I can have grilled cheeses all week long. Or I can always add cheese to something like pasta. Again, nice slice. They're at the bottom, and it can overlap. It does not, does not have to be perfect. And remember, this is also all to taste. If you don't like provolone, uh, Monster is actually pretty good on pizza too. I have a couple slices. That's good. I might combine some, some cheese later if I have to. So there's the provolone. This way I might have cheesy eggs tomorrow too. Some mozzarella. Slice mozzarella on top. If I have provolone, provolone eggs, that's cheesy eggs. Yeah, I've definitely had worse with my eggs. So, there's that. These two go back in the fridge. There's a lot of ball mozzarella. Uh, I just like, you know what? Again, worst thing, worst comes to worst, get a dollar loaf of bread. I have some grilled cheeses, that chips, pickles. That sounds actually pretty good. So with this, I actually got the single ball mozzarella. Comes out of package. Because I'm kind of lazy, I'm just gonna a quick slice. And depending how thick you like it, it's going to vary a little bit. Put that down there. Remember, this is going to melt once I put it in said oven. Does not have to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's probably better if it's not perfect. Only well, because you don't, I don't know, you don't necessarily want the perfect pizza. It's going to come out really good anyway. Mm, it's not something to really fret over. Some mozzarella. Fresh stuff put that in there. That's actually pretty good. That fills out that section really nicely. I'm a sausage guy. I'm going to have some sausage as well. And the sausage you can actually put in, and people say, oh, you're, you can't use raw sausage. I'm like, yes, you can. Remember, this thing's going to cook for a while. And the way I make the sausage is that I just don't put a whole freaking loaf in there. What I like to do, the rip off a little chunk, and just literally super flatten, because that's going to increase the said surface area, make it cook quicker, get that in, press it all down a little bit more. Now notice that you actually put the cheese on first because again, this is a raw product, you don't want to handle prepared, you don't want to handle raw then prepared, handle the raw first, it's pretty good. 
Again, smush it down in there. Smush, smush. If I have leftover, that just means one day I have like a triple sausage pasta. So, I mean, there's obviously worse things to have than not than too much sausage. Again, make it nice and thin. Decreases the surface area. Flatten it out pretty good. Pop it on, make sure there's plenty of coverage. Let's take a little smaller piece there, a little small chunk there. Flatten that out, that right on top. Press everything down. Wash up, because that's the important part, because again, handle the raw product. And this is probably going to be the decisive part. Um, a lot of people say, yeah, you have to make your own pasta sauce. You know what, I'm just going to put the whole can of tomato kind of on top. It's going to steam off eventually. Very simply, I'll let that for a moment. Drain off as much excess liquid as you can. I'll show you that in so that sink. And you can see how much difference that is. That went down a lot. Take a little bit more of that liquid out. You can tell the can, the can lid. So half that can was actually water. And you can see a little bit. Half the can is actually water, so it's going down there nice and neatly. Set that aside quickly, just get a spoon. Said spoon. But very, you can dump the whole thing on and spread it out. I mean, it doesn't matter, do you just want to spread it out thinly? kind of want to spread this throughout make sure nothing's clumped up press it into the sausage a little bit and so you don't have a bite of just pure tomato but you get a bite of a little bit of everything and the final step at least the purest would say I do have to wrap that up would be to add some Parmesan cheese the mix. You know what? This is the hobo kitchen, folks. All you need is some great parmesan on top. Sprinkling there. A little toasty. And now, this Chicago style deep dish is ready to go in the oven. And I've heard a couple different things. I've heard 420 for 40 minutes. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go by ear a little bit. Set the oven to 430. But well, typically I do like to cook pizzas at 440. Bake, that's gonna go. So right now, oh wow, that's pretty good. It's a quarter to seven. This pizza. And I have my Halloween decor out. It's almost Halloween. This pizza with its Chicago style crust. Wow, that's heavy. Right inside the oven. Probably for about 40 minutes. So that means almost 8 o'clock it should be ready. So we'll be back then. Okay folks, so it is 8.55. And look at that amazing looking pizza. In the oven. Look at all that steam come off. Uh, I have to put this down for a moment. Now the trick with Chicago style pizza is that you actually do have to let it cool so remember, you have all this molten cheese. So all this cheese is just literally going to melt. If you don't let it set properly. So again, that is bubbling. That is bubbling hot, man. So that has to sit for at least 10 more minutes. So probably, I don't know, I'm not gonna quibble over two minutes. So we'll come back, 
let, gotta let this cool off a lot though. We all had an amazing goodness. Be back in about 10 minutes, folks. Okay, so this is a tricky part. Oh, and I learned, for me, a three second, a, a three ounce pour takes six seconds. And oh my goodness, I never realized how much three ounces of booze actually, six ounces of booze actually was. For now, I need a new glove, too. I need to warm this glove up, so let's see here. There is an art to this. I know I'm doing this with a glove, which probably doesn't make it any better. Oh my goodness, I think I'm getting it though. Love it so highway. Let those cooked. It's solid, it's just a matter of. It's like a real pie. That first slice of pie, and knowing that this is not the best tool for it. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's not bad. Huh. Terribly warm feeling. Let's see here. Oh, -ho! there we go. I almost got it out perfect. So now it just needs another couple seconds. So that's, I, I'm amazed at myself, folks. Oh, great. Googly moogly. Okay, so I did a quick, simple test cut just to see if that cheese congealed, and it did. Dough is still really good tasting. So now, thankfully, well, the crust is nice and crispy. And I have a nice big old kitchen knife. See, so that's good. I'm just going to do this in thirds, I think. Or as close to thirds as the crust will let me. Again, if there's a break in the crust, just go with it. Again, it's so hard to be perfect. Yeah, let's see here. And then... Again, it's just getting through that crust, the edge, which is a kicker. Here, so now let's plate this up. I'm gonna need a knife and fork. Oh my goodness, folks, look at that amazing amount of gelatinous cheese that I had to cut a little bit. And that's not bad. If it just kind of oozes like that, that's really good, I think. And that sausage, I'll show you guys that picture. Pff, that looks freaking amazing. There we go. I mean, that sausage is cooked through, which is great. And that. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Yeah, let's see, we'll go quickly. And I have my little we'll call rye whiskey. Very quickly, I'll show you that because I think I have to re embed something. It's not too bad. It's there. Then we're watching a little bit for wrestling. Nice glass of pop. Which again, I'd like to thank. Everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see everyone later. Bye. And that's it for this show. It's probably and that's it for this show. longer than it should have been. Who knows? Um, a couple quick news and notes. Probably Monday. Or this coming Monday, because today's Tuesday. So, what's well, that? The twenty third. Look, look back down my on my pinup calendar. So the twenty third, I'll probably make a video, because it is Bike Toberfest here in Daytona Beach. So I'll have to show you some of the goings on that's happening here. Mainly at the racetrack, because that's the more civilized spot. Because I can do that Friday. That's nothing to do, so that's good. Um, I still have yet to hear from the Miami racetrack. They don't know what they're doing. Who knows? Um, I also might make a Hobo Tom Goes Fishing video.
Because I just realized I have some fish pictures. I can do some stuff like that. Especially if the fishing is good. I'm, I'm not opposed to that. Right, cheese pa? My hobo cat's taking a nap on the couch. Like she always does. So fluffy is my cat. And then, of course, for All Hallows Eve on Tuesday, October 31st, 2023, we have El Dia de Macho. The Day of Macho. The Day of the Dead. El Dia de Muerta. All Hallows Eve, or as most people call it, Halloween. Yep, and that's the Daytona Beach special. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and look forward to my upcoming videos. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oh yeah, if you ride motorcycles, be safe. We're like a helmet or something. And of course, watch out for wandering hobos like me working, picking up aluminum. Yes. Bye.